Hiya folks, something a little bit different for you today. As you probably know, we do a lot of work in my log cabins. I had planned to extend the log cabins and create some sort of spray booth area, but wood has gone up sort of threefold over the last couple of years, and I've been priced out of the market at this moment in time. So um, we've got work which we do, which I've sprayed in here many a time, and a lot of you have actually said, don't you get fed up with the overspray? Well, yes I do, and it does stay, it does stick everywhere. As you can see, like this was a brand new piece of uh, equipment then, and that is all sort of stained with uh, overspray. All this lot, all, everything gets overspray on all my tools. We do try and cover up as much as we can, like we put paper over all the shelves and all that, but it still gets stuff covered at the end of the day. And even down to like your personal tools, they all get a coating of that the, uh, the sort of uh, lacquer and stuff. So we've bit the bullet. We've tackled the problem a slightly different way. We've got an inflatable spray booth and it's turned up. Let's go have a look at it. So here's the kit, folks. This one come from Vivor. I've actually looked at quite a few of them out there, and Vivor tends to be the, the best one, I would say, in the price bracket which I'm uh, looking at. Now, these were in excess of £1,500 a couple of years ago. Uh, this one comes into about just over six, well, 600, between 600 and 700 pounds, depending on what time you're viewing this video. And uh, it's turned up, it's pretty compact. It comes with two blowers, this one. You've got the main blower, which is the larger one, which I think is around a thousand watt. And then you've got the smaller one, which pushes the air through the chamber to provide an airflow through. So this one keeps it going constantly and keeps the, the, the uh, spray booth up. This one is to push it through the booth. So let's get it unwrapped. So looking at the large fan, this one, as I say, I thought it was a thousand, it's 1100 watts. And the smaller fan comes in at 330 watts there. So that's what we're looking at there. It says on there, that's an eight meter by four meter. So let's get it unpacked and see how easy this is to set up. Right, so that's the two fans unpacked, folks. Nice and simple. And the reason why I went for this booth is because this is made out of a sort of a nylon sort of thing. A lot of them you find are just like made out of a, like a bouncy castle sort of stuff, plastic. And that can be very, very heavy. So this is one of the lighter ones out there. And uh, first of all, let's get the box open. We've got a box of accessories here by the looks of it. That might be a repair kit, yeah. So that's what that bit is. They give you a bit of extra cloth there for possible punches, which is nice. And then you've got your substantial guy ropes there. And also some nice substantial guy pegs as well, which is nice to see. So let's just leave them in the bag for the minute. A little diagram there of where to put the uh, tie down pegs. So they're the sandbags, which you can weigh it down with there, folks. There's seven of them. Probably the best way to transport this about would be just having a little sack barrow you know wheeling it about on a sack barrow so there you go let's put it back in the middle it's actually not too bad to move about and it does come in this little storage bag as well just tip it out there we go so that's to put it back in, obviously. Put it over there at the moment. So it is tied together with these, um, this cord. All right, okay. Right, that's all in out. There we go. So, so let's just get it in a position and roll it out. Let's see how easy this is to put up.
well that was pretty straightforward to lay it out I had to turn it around as you probably saw because I didn't realize that uh, when it was rolled up the spouts were the other way I want the fans to be at the back so let's go and connect them up right folks so we've got the two blowers around the back here and obviously we've got two spouts here one of these is actual larger the outside one is larger than the inner one which is smaller so you can't physically get the smaller one on there so it's pretty impossible to get these mixed up and all you literally do is uh, just put it over the edge of the fan motor and just tie, literally tie it round there we go, that's that one done the larger one again same thing there we go and that's that plug her in, is there a switch on this? yes there is an on off switch so we plug that big one in first right, plug the little one in now technically speaking we should be able to inflate this now now you don't want to be doing this on a windy day obviously so um, if it is a bit windy you should probably take precautions which I'm going to do is a little bit of wind here and I'm just going to go around and put the pegs in uh, along the side for the bottom rings just to make sure that it doesn't move about so I'm going to do that now right so all I've basically done here folks is get the uh, pins on the bottom one there three per side one there and also one down there done exactly the same the other side just in case it's a little bit windy so let's switch the pumps on see what happens I'll put them both on there we go probably just help teasing it out a little bit folks there we go I'm glad I did peg it down to the bottom because as I say there's a bit of wind here so so you've got a couple of handles on the side here folks to just help you just pull it out a little bit oh that zips open folks look that zip was open on this side as well folks so the air was just going out so we should see it go up pretty well now I thought they would have been done up didn't you from uh, the factory but there you go the air was pumping out of a gap about that big out of that zip there we go folks make sure that your inlet pipe it's not kinked that's why it weren't going up look how quickly it's just gone up since I straightened that look as you can see when I made it first of all this was kinked that's why it weren't pumping up so make sure that's got enough straight air to go in and as you can see it's pumped up absolutely fine now so that was my own problem my own fault and also make sure that these two zips on the side are done up as well that's really rigid now look at that wow fantastic so that probably does go up in a, about a minute or two they reckon and it's really solid god I'm impressed with that now you've got this zip all the way around which you can close up when you spray it it's a nice easy one and all long now and that one down there there we go that encloses everything in and you can then get in and out by that little flap door there god I'm impressed with that let's go around the back it's really solid folks it really is solid and as you can see I anchored it down there at the bottom and you've also got the higher anchor points up here where you can get them guy ropes and pull it down even further so coming in the back now this is the area where the little one goes in and even then can you see I've got that kink there look so let me just turn that off for a minute so I'm just going to remake that off because I've uh, I tied it upside down so keep your pipes running straight all the way through so you come into here and then you seal your door up there we go all the way down and around this then becomes your second chamber for pushing the air through into your booth when you take this off just pull them back 
There we go, like that. These are your filters. And I think you can take them off and change them. There you go. They have Velcro on as well, so you can change your filters as well. So that when you shut this booth up, here, like that, and you take that one off as well, The air from that little pump, it's just in this chamber and enters the booth, pressurises the booth in there, and then goes out of the other filters the other side. So providing your back door shut, the inner door shut, the air entering here is coming through these filters, pressurising the inside here, and dispersing through these side filters, which is one on either side. So you shouldn't get any overspray going outside which could possibly land on stuff and I must say there's enough light in here it's really substantial and you've got hooks on the inside where you can uh, hang up lights if you needed lights I suppose but all in all there's plenty of space in here to work you can take them panels off there which are just velcroed on there we go so they're just literally velcroed on folks them clear panels you've got two big ones either side it's a very nice spacious place to work in so you're going to need to leave the uh, pump on all the time the little motor basically so um, if you plan to do about three hours work out here leave it running for three hours paint can dry in here and it's very warm in here as well folks but I'm so impressed with this I'm so glad we got it and this is going to make a hell of a difference for painting anything, car panels. And we're even going to spray the uh, BMW in here, put this in the drive. That's the great thing about this, is that it's totally portable. And now that I've found that the two sides were open, which I shut up, and don't have your inlet tube kinked, and it goes up in no time. As soon as I unkinked that pipe, it went up in no time. So just a little lesson to be learned there. Uh, am I impressed with this so far? Yes. Absolutely, you bet I am, because we've never had an area like this. And to have an equivalent place built would cost two and a half, three thousand pounds, which is what I'm looking for the extensions on my log cabin. And in between six and seven hundred pounds for something like this, fantastic. They do a smaller version as well if you're only doing the um, car panels, sort of half the size of this, and it goes up in no time, as you can see. Get yourself a little sack barrow to wheel it about on. So once you've deflated it, fold it in on itself, roll it up, put it on a sack barrow, and then just store it somewhere. The two pumps are absolutely light as anything. So yeah, there you go. This is the inflatable paint booth from Vivo. I'll leave a link in the description below, folks. Um, do check it out and do check out their other sizes that they got as well. But this to me is a game changer because as I say, my workshop is full of overspray and we couldn't carry on no more like that. We had to do something. We've got lots of sort of painting jobs coming up in the future and you'll see this up and working uh, on many of occasions on the channel. Absolutely fantastic. It's a game changer for us. And it's gone in the garden, roll it up, put it back in a drive, happy days. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. I'm not being funny folks, but this could actually double up as an outdoor marquee as well. I mean, we've had them other marquees that you can buy for about £130 with the metal poles that you stick together, and they always break. This thing hasn't got any metal poles, it's as solid as anything, and it's got a fantastic amount of space inside, and it's weatherproof as well. So think about it if, even if you don't do any car body work this will make a great uh, sort of uh, a marquee if you do if you're having a sort of function in the garden or something so here's the website folks this is the vivo website at the moment it is 659 pounds it was 938 so you're getting a 30 percent discount anyway and uh, i've been on to them letting them know i'm doing a review video and they said they can give us a five percent discount by using the code just below in the description so you get an extra five percent off of that folks as well so don't forget folks, check out my other videos and also check out the Vivo website. I'll leave a link to the website and to this actual one below. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.